This video is going to be about the expectation known as the variance. Mostly we're going to look at examples because if we weren't just looking at examples, we'd have to do a bunch of nasty integrals or a bunch of nasty summations, and I don't want to drag us through any of that. So I'm going to try to explain the variance um, mostly by pictures and just give you a sense of the intuition of what it is and then write down uh, the answer, as it were, to all of these nasty integrals or summations we could otherwise do but won't. So we'll start with the normal distribution. So the idea goes like this. If you have a normal distribution, say it looks like this. Now theoretically, these tails extend off to positive in this direction and negative infinity in this direction. And theoretically, there's a mean mu, we might call it, centered in the middle so that if we were to observe data from this distribution, most observations would show up here near the mean mu. Well, the variance is an attempt to quantify how far away on average from the mean observations might show up. So if you imagine a, let's draw a better vertical line, a vertical line going up like this, and then somewhere at about the shoulders of this distribution, if you imagine this width here, but not the range of the support, but the width maybe at the shoulder height, then we would be describing the variance of the distribution, kind of the average width in terms of square distance from the mean. Now, the way we write the variance as an expectation, and we'll do it using random variables, is say there's a random variable x. We're interested in the distance from the mean, which itself is a different expectation, but we'll avoid that because the notation gets nasty otherwise. And we measure distance in terms of square distance because observations of the random variable above the mean will have positive distance from the mean, but observations below the mean will have negative distance. And these negative distances don't make much sense if we're trying to measure width of a distribution. You can't have negative width. So this is the definition of the variance. It is the average, that's what we should basically start thinking of expectations as, the average squared distance, the data, are from the mean. And then for a normal distribution, it turns out to be the answer is sigma squared. So that is, if we have a normal distribution with mean mu, the variance is sigma squared. Now the variance doesn't tell us much by itself, but if you were to compare a new distribution with the same mean to, okay, so let's name this one, a, and now you have sigma b. So if you were to compare this distribution, and this new distribution looks like this, then sigma a would be less than sigma squared b. So variances by themselves don't tell you much, but what they do tell you is relative to another distribution, how wide is that other distribution compared to the first? And in this case, we see that this distribution is wider than this distribution. So wider here would tell us, on average, data from this distribution will be further than from its mean than data will be from this distribution. One more time, on average, because this distribution has a bigger variance, on average, data will be further from the mean for this distribution than it will be for this distribution. And that's how we're supposed to understand this formula for the variance of a distribution. It is the average squared distance the data are from the mean. Okay, now let's try this for a different distribution. So we might have a gamma distribution with shape parameter alpha and rate parameter beta. So the formula stays the same. You still have the random variable in this example now following a gamma distribution 
minus the mean, and the mean in the case of a gamma distribution is alpha over beta. We could alternatively write this as the expectation of the random variable x itself, but I'm really trying not to put expectations inside other expectations because that can get confusing. So in this case, we have a distribution that is only defined on the positive real numbers. And the mean is somewhere over here. It's a little bit higher than you expect. It's not at the peak. It's a little bit off to the right because these large values in the tails pull the mean up a little bit. So the variance is still something like the average width of this distribution. And you can imagine if there was another distribution, here, let's change colors. If there was another gamma distribution that was a lot taller, but a lot narrower, then it would have a smaller variance. Okay, so for whatever gamma distribution you have, let's say it's shape parameters alpha and it's rate parameters beta, then the variance is alpha over beta squared. Okay, so there is an integral involved with this calculation. I'm just not going to write out the integral because the density function for the gamma distribution is quite nasty. So the last one we're going to look at is going to be the binomial distribution. And I'm going to emphasize the binomial distribution with k equal to 1 and p equal to 0.5. So this is essentially a Bernoulli distribution. It takes you a minute to think that through, but once you do, you'll see the connection. A Bernoulli distribution is just one trial of a fair coin. Okay, so the variance has the same formula because the expectation operator generalizes this area under the function for us. So it's either a sum when it applies to discrete distributions or an integral when it applies to continuous distributions like it might have for the previous uh, normal and gamma examples. So the same idea holds. It's the average squared distance of the data you might see from the mean. And the mean of a binomial distribution is k times p. Think back to flipping a fair coin 10 times. You should, on average, see five heads. Now, the variance here is k times p times 1 minus p. For this particular case, we're going to get 1 times 1 half times 1 half equals 1 quarter. And this is a similar sort of thing that you might see with the other examples. If you were to plug in specific values of the parameters for the other examples, you'd get out some number. I want you to think about this plot here. This plot takes a minute to imagine. If you thought of the variance of a binomial distribution, with p equal to 0.5 and, no, I don't want to set p equal to 0.5. I want to put p on the x-axis. So that is p can range from anything from 0 to 1. And right here in the middle is going to be 0.5. So this is specifically for k equal to 1 and p equal to any of these values on the x-axis. P could be 0. You have a coin that always shows tails. P could be 1. You have a coin that always shows heads. Or you have a fair coin with P equal to 0 0.5. The variance as a function of P is maximized when your coin is fair. Now, why is that intuitively reasonable? You should think about variance as how far away are data from the mean in terms of squared distance? Well, consider if you had a coin that always showed heads, then it would only ever show heads. So the mean would always be 1 
uh, the mean is one, but you'd only ever get ones out of this uh, distribution that always that represented a unfair coin. You would only get ones out of a coin that had the probability of flipping a one as one. So the variance would be incredibly small. All the data would be exactly the same number. So in fact, you'd have zero variance. Now take that same logic and apply it to a distribution with p equal to zero. If you had a binomial distribution with k equals to one and p equals to zero, that would be like an unfair coin that always shows tails, always shows zeros. If this new distribution always shows zeros, then there is no variation in the data. They always show zero. So the variance is in fact zero. The more your coin becomes fair, the bigger the variance is going to be. That essentially says, if you have a fair coin, you don't know what you're going to get on the next flip. Sometimes it'll be heads, sometimes it'll be tails. Either way, it's going to be as unexpected as you could possibly make a coin. Your ability to predict what value you see next depends on the probability of observing heads. And if it is exactly 50% of the time you see heads and 50% of the time you see tails, then data are going to be as far away from the mean as possible. Data as far from the mean as possible corresponds to a variance as big as you could possibly get for a Bernoulli distribution. This is a tough example to see, so I hope you spend some time thinking through width of a distribution as analogous to your inability to predict what observations you might see next. Uh, okay, so this was our introduction to the mathematical side of variances. Uh, next video up will be uh, the data side of variances.